Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's March 19th, 2014, and let's get straight into the news tonight. Soldier killed in Crimea, possible false flag to start war. The conflict is moving from a political one to a military one because of Russian soldiers. This is central banker Yatsin Yuk, and he said this at the defense ministry. Today, Russian soldiers began shooting at Ukrainian servicemen, and this war crime is, is without any expiry under the statute of limitations. But on the other side of the ranch, there was a report from the BBC website, and it said that the men were unidentified and the commander was taken into custody by Russian soldiers. And eyewitnesses told the BBC that armed men arrived in two unmarked vehicles, storming the base and firing automatic weapons. So you have to be careful where you get your sources. You know, the information does conflict uh, oftentimes uh, in the mainstream media. So don't believe the hype all the time, but definitely keep an eye on stories like this. Regardless, you got your senators like uh, John McCain here in the States pushing for war, beating the war drums. He wants war in the Ukraine. He wants war in Syria. He wants war in Libya everywhere. So you got to be careful about these things. They want to further the agenda of the military industrial complex. And somebody who's stopping this thing dead in its tracks saying, hey, I don't want anything to do with these war drums. I don't want anything to do with the illegal spying and all these other things going on. Rand Paul, he is very concerned about who's in charge of our government. Libertarian Kentucky Senator Rand Paul warns in a speech today that he believes U.S. spooks and shadow government agencies are, quote, drunk with power, and that the elected representatives are privately afraid of those operating behind the curtain. If the CIA is spying on Congress, who exactly can or will stop them? And that's a very good question, because we allow the CIA to run wild for years. Even Jesse Ventura has talked about this, how the CIA is operating domestically and they're not supposed to. So we have the CIA spying on Congress, even Mrs. Feinstein, the senator, the gun-grabbing senator, said, hey, I don't want the CIA spying on me. Of course, she thought it was okay when the NSA spied on you and me, but when the CIA looks at her, she said, hey, I, I don't want anything to do with that. So to you powers that be, definitely uh, realize that if I don't have my rights, you don't have your rights either. So I know it hates you, you, you hate it, and you don't want anything to do with it, but if you want to have your rights, I have to have mine too. You have to fight for me too as well. And somebody that we need to fight for, people who are victims of police brutality. We have this video, Kid Screams in Agony, as cop snaps his arm. Now I want to caution all of our viewers, this video is very graphic, it, it is very intense, so be aware of that as we go to this clip. And it was hard to hear over the screens, but I think the police officer said, it's okay, it's all right. I just twisted your arm and broke it, and you know, but, but that's okay. And this is the kind of tyranny that we talk about. You know, everybody asks, you know, what's this tyranny, this imagined tyranny that you guys keep talking about? Well, you know, situations such as this, such as here in the city of Austin, Texas, where the police can show up to an innocent man's house, shoot his dog and walk off, oops, I'm sorry. Or right outside the city of Austin, they can tase a kid, drop him down to the ground, bust his head open, and now the kid has brain damage. Or uh, as we saw on the Alex Jones radio show today, they said you can't have custody of your child because you have something in your house that somebody may want to break in and steal. So now you're responsible because somebody may break into your house for your big screen TV or whatever else that you have inside your house. Now you can't have your child. That's tyranny. It's not imagined. It is very much real. And this is why we have to stay sober and vigilant. Do not relinquish your weapons. Psychologist to line Boston Marathon route. This is an article by Adon Salazar. The unprecedented effort is being taken in attempts to accommodate spectators or racers who may be feeling a little more on edge, a little more tearful perhaps, or a little more irritable and less patient, a psychologist tells CBS Boston. You know the people who are probably feeling a little more edge and you know, a little uncomfortable with their surroundings? How about the people in Watertown where the authorities went house to house forcing people out at gunpoint? to uh, check their residences. I bet those people are a little bit more on edge these days, wondering when and if this thing could happen again, just as we saw in Hurricane Katrina. Though that never happened before. Hurricane Katrina, door-to-door -door confiscations, running up, putting guns in people's faces. Sir, can I please search your house? And you're like, well, he voluntarily complied to walk outside his house, even though I put a gun in his face. That's the new America. They'll put, come put a gun in your face. I experienced it. The guy didn't put a gun in my face, but he comes up to my apartment. Sir, get inside your apartment. I was like, I, I can't be any more inside my apartment than what I am right now. I come, slams my door. They love to run around with a black ski mask and all that. 
that's the new America. So unfortunately, this is the way things have turned out to be. But hopefully, you know, we get enough people, uh, law enforcement and military, we can turn this thing around so we won't have to worry about things like this in the future. But you know, for right now, they are going on because we have the ATF. The federal judge blasts the ATF for their stings. You know, this is when the ATF isn't running guns into Mexico or raiding Ares armor. You can see that story on PrisonPlanet.tv on the Alex Jones radio show. A federal judge in Los Angeles blasted the ATF for sting operations that he said unfairly enlist people in made up crimes by offering them a huge payday for robbing non-existent drug stashes. So basically this is an outrageous and unconstitutional thing and the judge ended up throwing out the charges against a man arrested by the ATF over one such thing. Now this is when the ATF isn't busy losing their weapons and I'm not talking about the guns that walked into Mexico during Operation Fast and Furious. I think it's since 2009 the ATF agents have lost about 50 of their personal defense weapons, you know, leaving them in bathrooms or at the park or wherever else in the <laughs> at the gym. Just complete silliness. They can't keep track of their own firearms, but then they want to come and tell you that you can't have a firearm. It, it, I found out today by watching the Aries Armor interview that if you have a shoestring, and I just found this out today, if you have a shoestring that's what 14 inches long, that's considered to be a firearm or at least a firearm component by the ATF. Complete lunacy, but they want to come kick in your door and take you to jail and take away your uh, take away your property that you have every right to have. It's complete lunacy. Another thing that's complete lunacy, the attack on women. You know, we have the InfoWars magazine, this current month's issue, that's the attack on men, but Alex Jones and Paul Joseph Watson have the attack on women. And there are 10 examples here, but the one that hit me most is number five. And this is feminists ignore plight of Muslim women. Now, I'm not pushing for uh, Muslim measures, but I think it's very uh, intriguing that nobody seems to care about these ladies who are having very real tyranny thrust upon them. While there, while there are innumerable examples of women being persecuted in the Muslim world, from their characterization as terrorists simply for driving in Saudi Arabia, to genital mutilation in African countries, to stoning in places like Afghanistan, Establishment feminists are too busy pursuing inane and offbeat causes such as Wikipedia being too masculine in order to focus on actual examples of oppression. And this is exactly right. They're busy trying to ban words such as bossy and uh, just silliness altogether. But meanwhile, you have real attacks, physical attacks on women. And nobody seems to care about this because I guess it's not trendy. It's not the, the Twitter following of the week to actually do some real work for women. And you know, meanwhile, they're running around, maybe not these ladies, but you have the feminist free bleed movement. I'm not exactly sure what that's about, but I can just say I wouldn't like to see a bunch of guys running around free ejaculating. And we'll end tonight with this, this segment. Government agency, if nine substations are destroyed, the power grid could be down for 18 months. And this is a very real scenario. Because you remember, we already seen the sniper attacks where the guys picked off a, a sniper substation, knocked out the power and so forth. So they're saying if you know if nine of these things are taken down, we could be in a bit of trouble for a while. According to the Federal Emergency Regulatory Commission's latest report, all it would take to plunge the entire nation into darkness for more than a year would be to knock out the transformer manufacturer and just nine of our 55,000 electrical substations on a really hot summer day. And this is bearing in mind that substations have very little to no physical security. And the article goes on to point out some of the things you would be without if you were to uh, be without power. Now, these are common sense things, but just keep in mind, you won't have your internet, your phone's not going to work, the ATM machines aren't going to work. So, you know, if you need cash, if the rent's due and you don't have any money, uh, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Every time I go out, I hear these guys talking about, you know, who does this anymore? Like I went out to an electronic store, a music store, and the guy was like, who buys CDs anymore? But I guess he has this trendy list on iTunes or I was out at the store and some guy was like, who pays with cash anymore? You know, because he has his little debit card that, you know, if a magnetic strip could uh, knock that thing out and, you know, he won't be able to get his funds. But, you know, we live in this digital world where nobody wants to have any uh, hard assets. So I guess those guys will be in a world of hurt if a grid down situation actually occurs. So stay tuned. After this break, we'll have more special reports. David Knight is going to be talking about the history of the Southern Poverty Law Center. You don't want to miss that. And also, I'll be talking to Victoria Montgomery of Open Carry, Texas. She's going to be talking about the police showing up to people's houses who have tattoos of guns. You know, first it was, you can't have a high-capacity magazine or you can't have a military-style rifle. Now, if you just have a tattoo of a firearm, the police will show up at your house. So stay tuned for both of those. But first, if you like this broadcast and you would like to see it continue, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can see the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, 
So much more right there at PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned after this break for more special reports. My friends, we have done it. With Dr. Group's help, we have developed the ultimate male vitality supplement with eight concentrated super herbs. This is the answer to the globalist war on male vitality with the estrogen mimickers they've added to the food and the water supply. And now our test pilot, our Chuck Yeager, Dr. Edward Group, is here to test his greatest invention. Doctor? Thank you, Alex. I will now take two droppers to test this ultimate male vitality formula. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a momentous moment. Thank you, Dr. Group. I will activate my muscles by doing push-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the move. This is unprecedented. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see what happens right now. Oh my god! What the hell? Wait, 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 wait! Get out of here! Shut this down. This is not safe. This is not hold on. Set him down. Get get another doctor. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with him. Help him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we did not intend for that to happen. I take it personally. Do not have those problems. Um, uh, again, these are these are authorized herbs, well known to be safe. Uh, and and uh, please, uh, doctor, doctor, wait a minute, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to cut cut to commercial for just a moment. Cut, cut, cut. Get everybody out of here. Super male vitality. It's awesome. Just not this awesome. Oh my God! What the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, the dramatization you've just seen is just that. It is satire to illustrate in a satirical way, the incredible power of super male vitality. It will not turn you into Conan the Barbarian, but it will help block some of the estrogen mimickers and reportedly let your glands produce the natural hormones your body needs. It also does have some other side effects in the human testing that we discovered, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to illustrate right now what that is. Let's see if I can do it again. It, it takes some focus. Up, up, and away! Start your journey to super male vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com. The Southern Poverty Law Center has long been the think tank hatching the idea of vast right-wing conspiracies. SPLC is the source behind some of the most outrageous enemies lists being compiled by Homeland Security, fusion centers like the MIAC report, and emails and policy statements by the military. SPLC creates the boogeyman, writes the script, and Homeland passes it off to the police who are trained to associate political speech with a threat to their personal safety. And it's not just political speech. Southern Poverty Law Center is attacking religious freedom, calling it hate. This line of attack has been promulgated within the military. The free exercise religion of those in the military is being attacked as not just hateful, but conflated with the racism of the KKK. It's an interesting comparison for the SPLC to make since it got its start in the violent racist confrontations of the 60s. On May 20th, 1961, when a busload of black and white freedom riders arrived in Montgomery, Alabama, they were met with what Time Magazine described as an idiot club swinging mob of about 100. In this picture, we see SPLC founder Morris Dees' first client. The man on the ground with the camera getting kicked by a Klansman? Uh, that's not Morris Dees' client. This is Dees' client. Dees didn't defend the Freedom Riders who were viciously attacked, bloodied, and had their bus set on fire. Dees defended the KKK thug, the ringleader. And he got him off, in spite of it being widely reported like this article in Life magazine. And Morris Dees got paid a lot of money, $5,000, which at the time was the median family income for a year. But this is what his bio on the SPLC website says. After launching a law practice in Montgomery in 1960, he won a series of groundbreaking civil rights cases. Maybe he should amend that to say that he won for the Klan, a leg-breaking case against civil rights activists. Morris Dees would have us believe that sometime after he got Klansman Claude Henley off, 